I'm going to turn things over to Keith Micus. He has recently purchased a used Model S. So this, so like many of you, uh, I looked at the prices of uh, Tesla's, you know, once the Model 3 came on the market. Uh, I did buy a Model 3 when it came out, <laughs> full disclosure. My coworker, he wanted it really bad, really now. So I, <laughs> I flipped it right to him, no profit. So then I'm like, okay, there's gotta be Model S is starting to come on the market. For those of you who don't remember me, I'm, a, I'm 6'9". <laughs> So I'm a, little, I'm a little bit on the taller side. So after years of driving my Nissan Leaf, uh, 100,000 miles I've got on it, you know, I decided that it was time to, to get a nice big car. So the thing with Teslas, as we're probably all aware, is they're constantly changing their vehicles. They don't wait for years to do it. If, if there's a, you know, a, a new function or a new display or back in the day when they did the, the autopilot rollout mid-year, you know, they, they do change a lot of things all the time. So going into it, you know, doing your research, right? There's some examples of a 60, 70D, 75 rear wheel, 75D, 85, 85D, Elaine's old one, P85D, 95, you know, it's it, and it's only going to get more complicated. So just know what you're really looking for. In my case, I wanted the extra trunk room in the front. So I was pr predominantly looking at just a rear wheel drive. I didn't need performance. So kind of an 85 I was looking at because I figured that was about 250 miles. Uh, kind of started where most people do. I started with a spreadsheet, but you know, these are some of the great websites. My EV, you can put your what you're looking for in there and they'll tailor it to sending you emails all the time of when cars are come up for listings. Auto Tempest basically goes out there and looks at Cars Direct, Cars.com, True Car, eBay Motors, Auto Trader. It's an aggregator, goes out there and just pulls them up. Same thing with Car Guru. You can go in there and it'll send you alerts on the vehicle that you're looking for. So instead of you know, going to a lot of different places. You know, these are kind of the three. Since, you know, I'm looking for an electric vehicle, you know, it's kind of a more tailored approach. And then really quickly, I came to realize that there's three dealerships nationwide, independent dealerships that predominantly have a lot of Teslas. You got iDrive Motors in Texas, you got Samjid Luxury in Illinois, and then you got Revit Motors right here in Lakeside in San Diego. Uh, all three places basically are buying up their Teslas at the local auto auctions. So the ones out of state, the Texas and Illinois, a lot of their cars are California cars. They've got the California clean vehicle, you know, HOV lane stickers on them. But being that they're also all looking at different angles on when they're going to the auction. Uh, so if you're well, if you aren't aware, uh, Enterprise, you can rent a Tesla. Oh. So they, they, they rent Model S's, it's in their luxury car division. And so being that it's an auto rental company, they're like, they've got their matrix on the car. They've had it for X number of months, X number of miles. They turn it over to the auction. So there is there for a while there, there was a constant flow of silver, white, beige, black Teslas from Enterprise just showing up at auctions. Yeah. And then, for those of you that just love spreadsheets, this is where I go crazy at times. <laughs> I would just go out to my uh, my websites. I plugged in what day I went to the website, what website, what car, models, battery, location. I was just basing it upon the price of the car and then the mileage 
and then I did a little math on how much I was willing to put down and then just a little side math on roughly what my monthly payments would be. Uh, you know, I kind of showing cars from all over the place and you know, I, there's, there's a couple Chevy Bolts in there. I've got a, the new Model 3 was in there, the Nero, the Long Range Real Plus, just to see what a, a new Tesla versus other cars, just for a price point comparison on, like I said, I'm, I don't know if I'm like most people, but I'm a little price sensitive. So again, I was trying to hit around that three, $300 a month car payment uh, I didn't quite hit it, but it's still, again, it's, I, I think I got a great deal on it. Uh, it was listed right there, the second one, third one down. I got it from the Lakeside guy, Revit Motors. Uh, 29 or 28, 995 is what he had it listed at. I basically came into him with a pre-approval for my credit union uh, for five, for $2,500. I told him I was willing to put down $5,000. I said, if we can go out the door for $30,000, you know, I would be more than happy. Uh, got back and forth with the owner, the sales guy did, and we agreed on that. In the end, after we ran all the paperwork, it came out to about a 160 bucks more. That wasn't a deal breaker for me. I could, I could easily just, <laughs> pull out a little bit more money, but yeah, I mean, that was my, that was my goal. And I think I achieved it. Uh, also, I was looking at the 13s, 14s and 15s for the Teslas, because at the time they were almost all guaranteed to come with free supercharging. So that is a feature that if you buy from Tesla now is a used Tesla, sometimes it comes on the cars. Most of the time it doesn't usually third party buying it from an individual. I've read many articles where it's still, you can transfer it to someone. However, I've also read articles that when you buy them at dealerships, used car dealerships that Tesla sometimes cracks down and doesn't let that transfer. Uh, so I did all the normal stuff. I contacted Tesla. I said, I bought the vehicle. I sent them the, the registration for the vehicle to prove that I was the owner and then they transferred the account over. And so then it came up my app and I, I lucked out, I got free supercharging. So another bonus right there. So here's kind of our driveway at one point when I bought <laughs> the thing, I kind of staged them there. Uh, yeah, it's the three cars. We got kind of first gen of the Tesla Model S, first gen Nissan Leaf, and first gen Chevrolet Bolt EV. The one, the Bolt has left and we got a new one. So still the same vehicles, three drivers in our family and three electric vehicles. Something that, you know, I think a lot of people might not be aware of, but is becoming something is repairing Teslas. You know, Tesla can be pricey, but at the same time, there are a lot of options. Uh, I had a business trip. I had to go to Phoenix for a week pre-COVID. So this is about a year ago. And my passenger window was not really running smoothly. So I went out there on the web. I found Gruber Motors. Uh, they're an electronic company, but they have a big Tesla service facility. They, they work on a lot of roadsters. Uh, I called them up. I told them what I needed to do. They said, okay. They actually gave me one of their Teslas. They had a flood damage Tesla that they brought back to life and they gave it to me as a, you know, a free rental to run around Phoenix while they were fixing the window on my Tesla. So that's available. Uh, if we all know Rich Rebuilds, you know, uh, his little company, Electrify Garage. I had a door handle fail that I think a lot of Tesla owners like those door handles. They do fail. Uh, 
I wasn't eligible to buy an extended service contract or anything. So my door handle failed, being someone who's used to working on Chevy trucks and Toyota trucks. And I had a Saab back in the day and I used to fix that Saab window all the time. I'm like, I think I can do this. Electrify Garage sells a kit to rebuild the, the Tesla handle. I believe full price, the kits are around 225 with sign up for their mailing list, one-time coupon codes. I think I spent 175 bucks for the rebuild kit. It came with all the parts that normally traditionally fail or should be repaired. Uh, side note, you know, first time I ever did it. So it took me 45 minutes to disassemble the door, the driver's door of my Tesla. It took me three and a half hours to put it back together. So not as intuitive to put it back together as taking it apart. Uh, gravity had a big effect on it. <laughs> Some of the things inside the door, you know, uh, once I loosened it, it easily fell down versus reversing the procedure. It was a little more time consuming in that. And then out here in Southern California, we had the guys from uh, EV Fix Me up in Costa Mesa. They do the, you know, the EMCUs, that's kind of their thing, but they do all things Tesla. They do Model 3 hydraulic front and back lifts for the, the trunk and the front. They also do a lot of other stuff for Teslas. They have their friends down here at Autobahn also out in El Cajon, which is predominantly a high-end auto dismantler but they've worked together to work on Teslas. So if you need something small or your vehicle's out of warranty, there's definitely you know a place locally that's starting to get into the business. Definitely we know where most of the parts are coming from. They're coming from wrecked Teslas. So you're getting OEM parts, but you know there's a, there's a chance that they will possibly break again, but that's where a lot of the, the parts are in the market. So there are more and more choices out there but locally with the amount of Teslas here, I know there's probably more places I haven't found them yet, but I know a uh, quick charge power, those guys in San Marcos, Tony and his crew, they'll probably work on a Tesla if you brought them your Tesla or was something they felt comfortable with. And then one of the last things that I kind of knew going into this is that there's a good chance that your Tesla might not have its charger or its Tesla to J17 adapter. They're pretty, the, the, the adapters are fairly small. The cars go through auctions, they go through used car lots, things disappear. So you can buy them from Tesla, uh, $100. And here's just a quick smattering of eBay, OfferUp, Amazon. They all sell them. Some of them are selling them new, some of them are selling used. There's that Lystron, L-E-C-T-R-O-N. They're making brand new ones, you know, and they're also around $100. So this is something, you know, you definitely would need because I needed it. So for the first week of my car, I went to the, the Tesla supercharger and charged there. But since then, probably 99% of my charging is all done at home. I've got the charger and time of use power so it, it's just advantageous for my time and the car sits in the garage a lot of the time and that's it so thank you if you have any questions yeah, could you, hey, hey, uh, Keith real quick um, you were yeah, talking John. about uh, you were talking about free supercharging being part of you know possibly part of buying an, a used Tesla what if the original owner paid for uh, full self-driving is that something that would transfer over to you as a buyer of a used Tesla? In my research that Autopilot One, like I said, I was looking at the older vehicles just for price point and convenience that that was transferring. Uh, I know with friends that I have, that's, that's something that they are all, you know, it's still a little bit up in the air. I haven't found definitive one way or the other that it's transferable or not. If you buy from Tesla, you can buy used Teslas from Tesla and clearly on their website, it tells you what features you do get. And so they do list that as a feature that you would get. 
And like I said, I have a feeling that if you bought it from a third party, another individual, that you could you could get it to transfer. However, from used car dealerships, I think that's where Tesla is just trying to crack down currently because they don't have control over it. Another question? All right, I think that's it, Elaine. I think back to you. Great, great. Thank you so much, Keith. That was awesome. Thanks, Always Keith. good to hear about what to look for when you're looking for a used EV.